a Pokemon Emerald Hardcore Nuzlocke with just bug types. In terms of challenges, this one is up there in the category, makes me want to commit Bridge Jump the most. First, just so we're all on the same page, what is a Hardcore Nuzlocke? It is a player-made game mode of Pokemon where you can only catch the first Pokemon you see on each route. If a Pokemon faints, it is considered no longer alive and cannot be used. You can't overlevel past the next gym leader's ace Pokemon, and you cannot use items in battle. Next, why only bug types though? Because I hate myself, and for whatever reason, I am determined to do every single one of the dumbest monotype challenges Emerald has to offer. To be extra clear, I am very anti-bug Pokemon. I think they kind of suck. Now, don't get me wrong, there is some vinegar room for an argument that at least starting in Gen 5, bug types became decent, to say the least. And in my last Nuzlocke video, uploaded to my second channel, it certainly is proven there on how broken they can be. But I must emphasize something. Compare what I had to work with in that game to the Pokemon at my disposal in Emerald. Look at this! Look at it! This run right here is going to be brutal, but I do hope you enjoy it though. And if you did, hit that subscribe button please. Right, our journey began like any other Gen 3 Nuzlocke, with a disregard to health and safety, followed by a grossly incompetent scientist. Within a minute of early game nonsense, we had grabbed our tool that we'll use to catch our starter, the first bug type on our journey, the Queen! Monarch Butterfly, get it? <laughs> Alright, never mind. Well, after ruining my very thoughtful name by choosing to identify as a moth, Dustox and I cruise through Petalburg Woods, save another incompetent adult, rush through Rustborough, and arrive at Route 116, where our second teammate, a Ninkada, is waiting. I name her Nikikada. This, then, just leaves the first gym. A rock gym, as all that's left to be done here. <laughs> So let's talk more about this rock gym. Mrs. Rockbun over here battles us with two Geodudes and a Nosepass, all of which have the 60 base power and speed lowering rock to them. Very unideal for a bug only run. Some may even say it's impossible, but I believe that statement is implausible. Even with the limited resources at our disposal, the Queen, who is from now on only going to be existing as a Beautifly for reasons you'll see soon, and the new and improved Ning Question, can still win. This does require a bit more setup though. Firstly, we need to catch a Wormball who's rocking a plus special attack nature, preferably modest. Secondly, we need to grind even more attempts to weed out a few undesirables. And thirdly, make use of every single EV we can. For later on especially, our special attack needs to be through the roof. Oh, and if you're new to Pokemon, EVs are just hidden numbers your Pokemon get after beating other Pokemon that raise a certain stat based on the aforementioned Pokemon you KO'd. In the description, I'll write a more in-depth explanation for you all. By the time the Queen and I are ready for Roxy Part 2, our naming convention was in full effect giving a power-up boost, and my confidence was high, as I was about to demonstrate only the finest and most eloquent form of battle imaginable. Opening up is the Queen vs Geodude 1. Now Absorb is a weak ass baby move, but Geodude's special D be sucking and a 4 times weakness to grass definitely doesn't help it. Therefore, both dudes are Geo KO'd with only one hit apiece. Nosepass on the other hand is a beefy child. It will not fold like paper in the face of Absorb's, but it will suffer death from a thousand cuts. Yes, I have deceived you. The Queen has already done her duty as ruler. Instead, Nose Pass must ask the Ning question. Why am I still here? Just to suffer. A 
And with a victory achieved at the Rock Gym, never again will we need to commit our beloved bugs to the horror of a super effective gym during this Nuzlocke. And feeling great after that win, my team and I put aside our biased hatred of birds by saving an old man's wingle, and I guess this guy's job as well. You're welcome. After completing my contractually obligated rant, every Nuzlocke has to do about how the president of Davenport is a piece of shit for making me a mail carrier as a reward for saving his friend. You capitalism bitch! I sail down the coast to Duford Town, with this area being the Alberta of Hoenn but replacing rats with bugs, delivering the mail to Stephen and defeating Broly in a beyond easy fight is all we need to do here. Yeah, flying bug is four times resistant to a man that punches. Makes sense to me. Two gym badges are ours. And before we move on, I want you all to take a moment and relax. Enjoy the surroundings because it's going to get significantly worse from here. First, however, a few other things. Number one, we get the answer to the Ning question of who is going to be more instrumental in this Nuzlocke, a Ninjask or a Shed Ninja? It's Shed Ninja, or should I say, Spooky Bug, boo! Second, we once again meet the less scary of the two evil teams, the leader of which displays workplace harassment, calling his men simps. Thirdly, we go and ca- Oh, it's you, fucking God. <laughs> Introducing Latin ladies, the single worst bug type in all of Pokemon, Illumise. You would not believe your eyes if you looked at this Firefly's stats, because they filled its move pool in a way that leaves teardrops every- Okay, I'm done with this. Gain the team, awesome bug. And get ready, all of you, for a truly horrific enemy is on the horizon. A monster, the likes of which Pokemon has never truly seen before. Gambling. But seriously, I do require the Psychic TM, and the only way you can get that is from making enough money by gambling. Or you could just give yourself unlimited money, because these machines are actually broken, so this isn't technically cheating on my part. And I know it's like, oh look at that, it's Subway Surfers! Look at the Subway Surfer doing his surfing! Don't pay attention to what's happening on the top part of the screen, just look at the Subway Surfer. But I do hear you ask though, why Psychic TM? What it for? Simple. Watson. Watson is reason! At first glance, you may be confused, because for all intents and purpose, half of Watson's team doesn't exist. Electric and Maynectric don't have any moves that can hit Spooky Bug the Shed Ninja, because Wonder Guard is a broken ability that I will be abusing like I do with all the drugs. But here's the problem with abusing. Sometimes the abused fight back. Voltorb has rollout, meaning Spooky Bug is helpless in that fight, and electric moves against two flying types? Not ideal. Unless, the stronger of the two, Her Majesty herself, learns Psychic and simply two shots to Voltorb, only having to dodge one measly critical hit. And as for Magneton, I'll give you the battle plan for that nightmare in a short moment. First and foremost is dealing with Voltorb and Electrike. I've divided a load of cherry berries throughout the team to reduce the chance of being paralyzed, so again, there's only really one way this, this goes wrong. A critical hit, dude. The one way this goes wrong and it happened on the first turn. But now, with our backs against the wall, Awesome Bug will rise up and prove that she can die with everyone else. Alright, we run it back. Catch the Queen and Nid question. Defeat Roxanne in honorable combat. Sweet Broly. Finally get the real ninja answer. And then, bing, bada boom, we're back. Same plan as before. Berries have been distributed. Psychic obtained. Pray to all known gods, we're not going to get critted. God damn it! Literally, why? That's ch- I'm sorry, what? Well, thank you for a perfect recap of events there past me. Now on to Electrike, who paralyzes Spooky Bug and forces them to consume the Cherry Berry. Fantastic! 
but he is KO'd nonetheless. Next on the chopping block is basically Watson's final Pokemon, Magneton. Magneton here has Supersonic, which causes confusion. If we hit ourselves in confusion with Spooky Bug, that's game over. Nothing can beat this thing at that point. Well, listen to this joke. Magneton will never use a normal attacking move against Spooky Bug. We can always safely switch into another teammate. This will cure any confusion Spooky Bug has, so when we switch him back in, after blocking any attack Magneton does, he'll use Supersonic again. And the punchline to this joke, Magneton will eventually run out of Supersonic PP, and when that does happen, he'll be helpless as a child. It's hilarious. Spooky Bug can then lay the hurt on both it and Mainetric with ease, acquiring us badge number three. All thanks to Spooky Bog and that other thing we switched into to stall. Honestly, could have been anyone. Either way, we move on, heading through the next few routes without any real problems. There are a lot of random trainers, but they aren't very difficult if you know what to expect. And after looping back around with a bit more equipment, we start to scale Mount Chimney. Once at the summit, we came face to face with the most terrifying, villainous team in all of Pokemon. Team Magma. Bugs do not like fire. Completely unrelated general knowledge. These guys barely have any fire types. There's like five between them all. The reason these funny looking men are scary is because secretly they are known as Team Zubat. There are a f ton of Zubats. Not ideal for our bugs. Playing around the Zubats involved mainly just hitting them as quick as we could with Ninjansa, but once we came to Maxi and his pad, we had to play a little bit safer. After getting into a good position with Mighty Ina, I simply set up a sword stance with Ninjansa, who can then sweep his entire team with secret power. An easy enough win here, but these guys are going to be a recurring problem. Speaking of problems... My game is in Christ. I lied when I said Roxy was the last gym we'd face with super effective Pokemon. The children on our team are once again being tossed into the trenches of war. Remember that fun fact, bugs don't like fire? Welcome to the sauna, boys. It's fire gym time. Flannery's team is incredibly scary, and by comparison, our team is looking like Weenie Hut Jr. It seems impossible to win this. But I'm here to tell you, though, looks do often portray everything you need to know. I mean, look at Arsene Bug, for example. But even with that, sometimes the ugly ducklings can make it across the river. In her home environment, Arsene Bug actually has some advantages we can use. She can lower the lead normal's attack with Charm, lock it into Sunny Day with Encore, and survive a full power overheat when I mess up and forget how Encore works. There's really only one way this goes wrong. Crit! Just don't crit! Just don't crit! Oh, baby, let's go! Good job, Arsene Bug, but you're only part of the solution. The Queen is here as well, flashing the competition, lowering their accuracy to the point they still hit like two overheats, because of course they do. Regardless of that nonsense, though, Nummel's attack is now minus six. Its special attack is minus six. Its accuracy is minus six. And Ninjansa's attack is about to be plus six. A power that strong, equipped with a silk scarf for extra damage, means he can barely KO all of Flannery's Pokemon, even tanky as heck Torkoal. In less than a minute, the Fire Gym has been defeated buy some bugs. Let the world know our power, because today marks the last time any bugs will need to risk their own lives battling against a superior foe with super effective weapons. Now is the time to carry on, my wayward sons, right into the loving embrace of an anorith we bring back from the dead and name Arnie. And he's gonna have a baptism by fire sort of deal here, because despite Norman, the fifth gym leader, having normal types, we can't just blank everything with Spooky Bug. But we can still be little demons and make this fight almost unlosable through the most unentertaining gameplay you can imagine. Starting off the fight very strongly, a boosted up Ninjansa KOs Spinder, Vigoroth, and Linoon. Once Slacking comes out, all Arnie must do is tank one hit. 
Nice. Which he does. Then we merely take advantage of Slacking's loafing ability. The way this works is by hitting on the loafing turn and protecting on the attacking turn, Slacking can never get a single other hit on Arnie. Until I try to be clever and use Dig, which can achieve the same effect, but I messed up the timing and almost died. I even had to equip a Leper Berry to restore Protect PP because of how long this battle took, which is just infinitely funny to me. Speaking of funny, suck it old man, you lost to something born millions of years ago. Welcome to the team proper, Arnie. And thanks to him, five out of the eight gyms are done without one loss. That is pretty epic. And I think it's going to continue. For a while after those two gyms, nothing of note really happened. Just a lot of walking, simple battles, saving hostages from climate terrorists, the usual. I even thought May, whoop to do it was super easy and nothing of note happened. But I feel I have to include it for some reason. I suppose it does serve one purpose. It was my last battle before the sound of our footsteps faded when I stopped to gaze upon Four Tree City. Home of the f***ing flying gym. Yay. Okay. My gamers, God with you all. This is where things go from... Boy, this sure is a fun challenge, isn't it? To... A flying fish would have more fun on land than I here. The flying gym. Birds. Pelicans. Dancing dragons. Need I go on? Yes. It was goddamn easy! Oh, get f- Winona! I own her! Got him! Like, I'll be fair, the gym trainers bit, especially the double battle, left me feeling a bit anxious, but the gym, oh, the gym battle itself, that was executed perfectly. This is some guillotine level of execution here. Let me set the scene here. The Queen takes on the lead Swablu, two shot to get with Psychic, and burning a Hyper Potion in the process. What takes its place is Trophius, and while it may look intimidating, the tag team of Awesome Bug and Arnie is strong enough to stall this thing out of all its moves. Yes, we're going down that forbidden path. Twelve. <gasps> oh! Oh, I misjudged that. When it's as useless as artillery in a storm, the best bug comes in to deal the final blow. Oh, wait. You don't know who the best bug is, do you? Lads and ladies, may I introduce to you Heracross baby, Heracross time, beetle time, the god tier bug type. Yes, after only a short walk to the safari zone, a very stressful catch because Heracross can run away here. But he didn't, thankfully. Whilst the beta second flying type bugs use their wings to escape their problems, Heracross, in her Sigma Glory fighting type, punches all the problems in the face like a real chad. None of this sissy stuff. Look at her compared to Awesome Bug. The difference is staggering. She truly, truly earned the name Best Bug. And the Best Bug bulked up to the max before destroying those stupid birds in one shot apiece. On this day, the Flying Gym was grounded. And with that, there will never be another gym to cause or- Hey, what's that over there? Oh, it's stuff. A whole lot of stuff. Oh, stuff, stuff, stuff. And also evil bat-related teams. Yeah, it's that time again. First, Team Subat, but with water, are disrespecting the dead at Mount Pyre, so we make them dead. Then, our old friends, the OG Team Zubat. Still aren't very scary, because we can deal with Zubats fine now. And their lack of fire Pokemon continues to disappoint me. In a similar vein to our first meeting, I just weakened Maxi's Mighty Eona with Charm, and then set up Swords Dance with Ninjansa, before reducing Maxi's pad to a pile of bodies. And hey, oh, oh look, at, look at them, look at these big boys, evolving to Team Zoo slash Gold slash Crobat. Good for them. After Gordon casually defies the laws of physics by launching straight up in the air, we make our way over to Lily Cove and take down the first half of Team Sue slash Golbat but with water. And after they get away on that stupid dumb submarine, I finally, at long last, get to surf over to Moss Deep City, where, in a gym trainer battle, Arnie evolves. And yes, I said gym trainer. We are getting prepared to battle 
the Psychic Gym. Okay, I just want to make sure we all, we all heard that, right? Psychic Gym. Psychic Gym. You would think that would imply Psychic Types. Bug, super effective against Psychic Types. Therefore, the Psychic Gym should be easy. No, you are wrong. You get an F in Pokemon Emerald Studies. Through spread moves and a double battle format and the fact we have no usable bug type moves, this is not fun. We can't just set up with best bug and our team is too weak to just go in here all willy-nilly. Plus, two of Tate and Liza's Pokemon actually have super effective moves against our bug types. No exaggeration. This was by far the hardest gym to plan for. So that brings up the question, what happened? What did I come up with? Well, with Claydol and Exactu leading, I send out Awesome Bug and Best Bug first. The latter is pre-poisoned to activate her Guts ability, giving her a plus one to attack. The boosted attack and a boosted facade, one hit a Satu, off the bat. It is then replaced by a Soul Rock, who knows, Flamethrower, annoyingly. For this reason, I did set up a light screen with Awesome Bug, because while Claydol's Earthquakes are theoretically scary, they are no critical threat, and for that reason, next turn, I also opt to Encore Claydol into its Earthquake. This prevents it from pulling any random shenanigans with Psychic or Ancient Power. And on that same turn, Arnie swapped in for Best Bug and Soul Rock set up Sunny Day. All this led to my greatest weakness showing itself. Me. I am the weakness. I swapped Arnie for Ninjansa, who can avoid earthquakes. Then, rather than Encore Soul Rock into the useless sunny day it just used, I used Moonlight to heal the barely any damage we've taken. You greedy mother awesome bug. I sure hope that does not have any consequences in the near future. A consequence of this is Ninjansa is put in the line of a psychic for some reason. So then next turn, after being saved, I choose to not do anything really and just hit a very strong Shadow Ball into Soul Rock. Then Soul Rock actually realizes it has the Flammerwuffin in the back and Ninjansa finally gets to realize the real question all along is what the fuck did I think was going to happen there? After our first tragic death, I send Best Bug back out and have her KO Soul Rock. Meanwhile, praying Claydol doesn't get another crit with Earthquake. Which, through some miracle, it doesn't. As it is also still locked into Earthquake, and the Lunatone that comes in is only using Psychic moves, it's relatively safe to finally send out Spooky Bug. And once the second Encore is set back up on Claydol, it is all over, with Spooky Bug only needing a few Shadow Balls to finish Tatanlyzer's remaining Pokémon. Meaning, there was probably a way this funeral could have been avoided. And that is even sadder. However, you want to hear what's better than one annoying gimmicky battle? A second, more annoying, more gimmicky double battle. I always dread this double battle with Steven where you can only bring three of your own Pokemon because your teammate AI can sometimes be the HAL 9000 IQ do all the work AI or chat GPT draw a circle AI. And this time we're gifted with the former. Thankfully, Best Bug was able to get a plus two attack thanks to Mighty Ina's swagger without realizing our person berry cures the confusion. And then after KOing it and a camera opt after that replaced it, Steven read our minds and when the Crobat came out, hit it with the super effective Psychic. Next turn, as I send out Arnie, Crobat is finished with one more Psychic. Maxi and his pad are completely taken care of, and then Steven decided to truly bring out his Chad energy, because he proceeded to wipe the entirety of Admin Tabitha's team using only Metal Claws. What a lad. The rocket that Team Zoo slash Gold slash Crobat were trying to blow up or whatever has been saved. We are now officially in the end game. But before facing off against the 8th gym, we have to, again, deal with Team Zoo slash Gold slash Crobat, but with more water. And to be honest, I'ma just skip most of them. It's really straightforward at this point. Best bug for Mighty Ina and a lot of the water types, then Arnie for any bats. 
There is, however, one part of the Archie fight that I really want to bring attention to because it was really funny. So the aforementioned plan on how to deal with this team's Pokemon worked really well. His final ace Pokemon, though, Sharpedo, made Arnie smack himself in confusion for stupidly high damage, and then, as a result, I had to send out Arson Bug to face off against the Shark. Sharpedo then decides to use Taunt on us. Fun fact, because I have zero respect for her, Awesome Bug doesn't have a single attacking move, it's all just support moves, meaning after the taunt, she immediately struggles, hitting herself in the process, and getting a critical hit on Sharpedo. <laughs> I just want to point out, that was the first proper attack in this whole Nuzlocke Awesome Bug actually hit. And it was a critical hit. I hate Arson Bug, ironically, with a burning passion, but at least her turmoil can be entertaining at times. Anyway, I switch back to Arnie, and he easily KOs Sharpedo with his ancient power. Now, with both Gordon and the whale loose in Hoenn, the final chapter to this story is about to come to fruition. The ending of Pokemon Emerald, the legendary conclusion, is here! Bear witness! to my animation because I forgot to record it. Wa'a. Lond. Cease. They ceased. End. That thrilling side story concluded. Let's carry on with the main quest. Gym badges. The real dramatic story is here. The final gym. The most difficult. Most challenging. A water gym against our bugs. There is only one thing in our way. How are we going to beat the eighth and last gym? <sighs> we utterly one shot every single one of his Pokemon after bulking up once with Best Bug and then curing confusion with another person berry. And with Best Bug taking the final gym badge for us, all that remains is the Elite Four. And I can safely say, without any irony, the worst is behind us. Smooth sailing ahead, guaranteed. Okay, well before actually we reach the Elite Four, this sick child does challenge us in Victory Road. Uh, normally I'd skip this fight, but given what I mentioned before, the fact we haven't seen the Queen and Spooky Bug even that much, and everyone loves those two, I decided, hey why not, let's bring the entire gang out for one last fight. After Arnie took out Altaria and Delcatty, I swapped in the Queen to use Psychic on Roselia, and finally Spooky Bug got to do their thing on Magneton and God of War, neither of which could actually hit it. Always very entertaining. But now, the Elite Four proper. The best of the best. And I am using a team of bugs, arguably the worst type in the entire game. How can they defeat such immense power that these guys have and girl well for free the answer is to use incredible violence look i always hate that i have to skip past three quarters of the elite four whenever i play this game but i mean we clicked brick break five times we used bulk up then clicked earthquake five times and i actually forgot there was a second woman here whoops then we go up against the ice lady and I misclicked and hit facade. Oh, that was a misclick. I think we still kill it. Yep, okay. Following this, we click brick break four times. So exciting. Explosion green screen. Yay. I can't make it more exciting, sorry. The worst thing is, even Drake is only a tad bit more difficult, and I have to go into a tad bit more detail. Awesome Bog and Arnie basically need to stall out Shell Gone until all of its moves are Shell Gone, a feat more stressful than it should be because Shell Gone hits like a truck, and that means our health quickly becomes Shell Gone. But after a very boring, like, 10 minutes, the job is done. Now all Best Bug must do is come in and set up two bulk ups. 
With this, we can barely one-hit the entirety of Drake's team. Best Bug's insanely high attack truly is a blessing here, because the amount of HP lost to Poison throughout the battle is staggering. And yes, I should actually mention that, we once again are using Guts Boosted Heracross. The Poison damage is scary, but the math always works out. Best Bug has defeated the Elite Four in record time. Now all that remains is the Champion Wallace. And oh boy, guess what exciting final battle will end this Nuzlocke. What will it look like? Well, Whale Lord has very little PP. It is a shell gun, but in whale form. Can you guess what's going to happen to all the fun here? It's going to be well gone. I can really tell you're all thrilled, so let's get on with it. All we must do is sacrifice a few of the lower class, get Best Bug in, set up a few bowl cups, and we have just enough health to sweep the entirety of Wallace's team. It is perfect. Dare I say, this is a flawless plan without flaws. Oh my god, no. That's not good. I thought we had time to heat. Oh dear. Right, let's say, hypothetically, I thought it would be funny to not heal the team until my eyes were met by Wallace's. Think of it as a hypothetical intimidation tactic. Well, if I did hypothetically do that, what do you think would be the best course of action if Wallace were to engage the battle immediately before I could actually heal, meaning that my team looks like this in the final showdown of this Nightmare Nuzlocke. And let's say, hypothetically, this isn't a hypothetic situation I'm in. My gamers, God praise you all. I am so sorry, but there is no longer a universe in which we will win, except one. And that involves one hero. A bug who has been kicked around and mistreated this entire Nuzlocke. One legend who's been the driving factor this entire playthrough. One firefly that can light the path to victory ahead. Our hopes and dreams now lie in awesome bug. In hindsight, they always have, but now it is needed more than ever. Oh, God. God, I cannot just wait for you to die, awesome bug. I genuinely just cannot wait to not have to look at your awful sprite ever again. Let me quickly go over some basic things. First, just KOing Whale Lord and hoping for the best as we move through Wallace's Pokemon isn't going to work. There are way too many variables that lead to that plan going awry. Second, I can't use Spooky Bug for anything that we're going to do to this Whale Lord because the AI, sometimes, rarely, but it can sometimes happen, they will use their one brain cell and switch when the Pokemon can't actually hit a Shed Ninja. And if that happens, we're screwed. The play going forward is to keep roughly the same original plan, but use Awesome Bug's wish to heal up Best Bug before she goes on her sweep. Phase 1 involves getting Whale Lord to use Rain Dance, allowing us to encore it into that move, then we use Wish, then we can safely switch in Best Bug, who will get healed to near full health. While at first this suddenly looks less likely given the first turn Whale Lord uses Double Edge, on the second it does use Rain Dance, and then we can lock it in, and then Best Bug gets to be healed up. However, there is now a choice to be made. Either go for the Bulk Ups here, we can then get through like a decent amount of his team, but we probably won't be able to keep B-Bug for the long run. Because eventually Gyarados is going to come out. Because... In the end, I opt for the full heal strat, as it's the safer option of the two. But sadly, it does mean we need to throw a butterfly to the whales, as the saying goes. A monarch has fallen. Funny story, the Queen was actually still alive when this was originally recorded. I don't know if that's like foreshadowing or not, but it's funny nonetheless. Anyway, back to the fight for survival. The Queen's death is not in vain. Her Giga Drain has put Waylord's health low enough that War Spouts are doing basically nothing now. And once they are all gone, Arnie can come and help Arsene Bug stall out the Blizzard PP. With the most powerful attacks used up and Arsene Bug's charming personality lowering Waylord's attack, Double Edge is its only move 
and it is hitting for very little damage. So now I decide to go all in with Best Bug and use the first of two bulk ups. But after checking some damage calcs, I realize that the best case scenario we can achieve is 5 out of 6 Pokemon KO'd by Best Bug. And that is only if we are max health and don't take a lot of damage while setting up. Because Double Edge smacks us a little bit too hard, I choose to reset and wait for Waylord to struggle, making the damage it does be the absolute minimum. It's a few more turns of switches and precious PP being consumed, but eventually, it's time. Best Bug gets sent back into the fray this time against a struggling Whale Lord. As her health maxes out, it is now or never. The bulk ups begin. One, and then two. No crits were had, so now it's facades all the way to the end. There's nothing else we can do other than that. Finally, after all the work she's done, Best Bug falls to poison damage. The Black Death claims another. But it isn't time to say GG yet. Oh no, we're still in the GL phase. The one thing in our way now is Milotic's Toxic, and it only has 10 PP. Spooky Bug can always bait the Toxic and win us the fight if they are all used up. Arson Bug's Encore will drain them even faster, and Arnie, Arnie still has full health. That can stall out even further. It's crazy, because you can really see the absolute panic I was in here, using Protect against Toxic, even though I was already poisoned, and therefore didn't need to. It's looking really good. Sadly though, as always is the case, my panic, it gets the best of me. Here, right here, we are just one. All the toxic PP was gone. A little bit anticlimactic, I know, but in hindsight, we had more than enough time to do this. But I had miscounted, and worse, misunderstood how Encore worked. When used here, Milotic had none of her toxic PP, and it failed. And Arson Bug, a light in the world we only ever blamed for the shadows it created was snuffed out by Surf. And in my fear that a stray toxic was still possible, Arnie as well was taken by the sea. These two titans, one only recently getting the recognition she deserved, have fallen. But at this point, I knew, I was certain, this stupid fucking sea snake could no longer poison Spooky Bug. And without that awful tool, it was all over. A confused ray and a few Shadow Balls later, I had won. The Pokemon Emerald Hardcore Nuzlocke with just bug types. Jesus Christ. That was hard. And that brings an end to what is probably the most difficult gaming related challenge I've ever had to do. Like, seriously, I had to cut out so many other battles just so this video could be under an hour long. It was brutal, but I hope you have enjoyed. I really do. I just want to take a moment to thank both of my artists for giving me this incredible art. As you know, my own artistic skills are non-existent, 
so having them work with me here was a true blessing. Massive shout out to them, I am so happy with how it all turned out, and hopefully there should be more like this in the future. If you made it this far, please hit that subscribe button and hit the like button, leave a comment, tell your friends, maybe send a message to Pokemon Challengers and tell them to react to this video so I can get more views. Do all that lovely stuff, why not? But seriously, I'm very happy with how the first proper video on this channel has turned out. I think it's been really good. And I hope everyone watching this will enjoy all the stuff I put out in the future. I have a lot of plans and hopefully to turn out good. Aside from that, I have a Patreon by the way, so if anyone wants to support me, just help me to be financially secure and make more videos, that would be amazing. Link will be in the description. Finally, I'm streaming all my other Nuzlocks and stuff over on Twitch. Link again is in the description, so come and check me out if you want to see me fail live. I'll be streaming Saturdays and Wednesdays, and if there's any changes, you can join me on my Discord server where I'll post any updates. And I think that is about everything. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.